And good evening to each and every one of you. We are certainly delighted that you have invited us into your homes this evening to share in this worship experience with you. We trust that your week have been going well thus far and uh, that God is certainly leading in your experience. As you fellowship with us this evening, whether you're joining us locally, the Shagwanas or Felicity churches, or at one of our churches within Trinidad, we welcome you. And even for those of us joining us internationally, uh, we welcome you as well. Uh, God has certainly been good to us. And as we fellowship with him, I pray that you will certainly receive the blessings that God has in store for you. So feel welcomed because you are welcome. Bow your head with me as we have a word of prayer. Loving Father, we are so thankful for your love towards us. We are thankful, oh God, for the day that you have brought us through. We are thankful for your leading in our lives. Even now, as we take some time to worship you and to meditate on your word, we pray that you will lead in our experience as you have your way, oh God. We surrender to your working, to your leading. Be with the participants this evening and may everything be done to your names on and glory, I pray. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. At this time, I invite you to take your Bibles with me as you turn to our scripture text of meditation. Our scripture text of meditation is found in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. The Bible says, reading from the King James Version, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That is the word of God. At this time, I invite our sister Vanessa to join us as she leads us in the singing of that hymn, I Would Be Their Savior, Holy Dine, hymn number 308 in the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. Follow and tune your hearts and your voices as we lift praises to our King. Hello, good night everyone. I am happy to be here as we have another Wednesday night service. Let's turn to hymn number 308, Holy Thine, and that will be our opening hymn, hymn number 308. Let's go. I will be their Savior, holy thine. Teach me how, teach me how. I will do thy will, O oh Lord, not mine. Help me, help me now. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my What is worldly 
cast its transient joys behind. Come a thou near, come a thou near. In thy presence, all in all, I find this my comfort here. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my. Thank you, Sister Vanessa, for leading us in that beautiful hymn. Uh, we have arrived at a point of a worship experience whereby we would hear a word from God. This evening, I am delighted to welcome to our worship experience, Evangelist Rian Daly. Now, yes, the name probably sounds familiar because he would have ministered on this platform uh, a few weeks ago at one of our Sabbath worship programs. And so he's joining us this evening from the Central Jamaica Conference. Uh, he is a final year theology student at the Northern Caribbean University. He's married to his lovely wife, Nadia. And so they have a beautiful marriage together. Uh, he's a good friend of mine and certainly he has been uh, one who is dedicated to God and dedicated to doing God's work. And this evening, I am privileged to have with us to share God's word, Evangelist Ray Ann Daly. But before he does that, I'd like to invite our uh, sister Kelly, as she would minister to our hearts with a special item in song, after which we hear from God's servant. Bless the Lord of oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great and Your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord of oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand reasons, then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. 
Yes, I will worship your holy name. Lord, I will worship your holy name. Thank you, my pastor and friend, for your kind words of introduction, Pastor Ronaldo Hines. It's a wonderful thing to know that we can be with you again. The last time we were with you, it was on a Sabbath. We had a wonderful time. This evening, uh, it's prayer, power, tower, our night. And we believe that when we pray, God will hear and he will answer. We believe that when we pray, he will deliver. We believe that when we pray, he can stop the war. We believe that when we pray, he can give us another chance. And so tonight we come. I bring you greetings on behalf of my lovely wife, Nadia Washington Daly. I also bring you greetings on behalf of the Manchester Labour Workers Federal and also from its contingents of workers or immediate director, Pastor Barrington McLean, who, who sits as assistant to the president for evangelism within the Central Jamaica Conference. He, he has a very heavy portfolio and I ask you to keep him in your prayers as well because he is not only in charge of the Manchester Labour Workers Federation, which I am a part of, but he is also in charge of the uh, Clarendon Labour Workers Federation and by extension, the uh, St. Catherine Labour Workers Federation. He has special needs, he has Sabbath school, he has personal ministry, a lot on his plate, but he sends his blessings, he sends his greetings, and we pray that you'll keep him in your prayers. Let me also say thank you to the person who gave that number in song. My heart was blessed. Ah, I want to bring you to the book of Jeremiah this evening. Jeremiah 29, verses 12 to 14. And I want to speak to you on a topic. Call on God. Call on God. Call on God. Call on God. 11 through 14. For I know the text is. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then he shall call upon me, and he shall go and pray, and I will hearten unto you. And he shall seek me, and find me, when he search for me with all your heart. And I will be fond of you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places whither I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. Bow your hearts with me while I pray. Father in heaven, bless every heart now I pray. Bless every worshiper. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Give us a word for the time in Jesus' name. Amen. Call on God. Call on God. The text is quite fitting because we live in a time, we live in a time, my brother, we live in a time, my sister, where we realize that people are living in a state of confusion. People are battered by the winds of doctrine. People are, 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 are bothered by the winds of strife. People are confused. Some don't know what to believe. Some, some don't know what to do. When they see the challenges coming in like a flood, they don't know where to turn. There are those who don't believe that there is any God. There are those who are atheists. There are those who are agnostic. They believe that there is a God, but but somehow they don't believe in the God of the Bible. But let me help you to understand something this evening from the soul of the text. The text comes behind the background of a people that has been held captive. God's children, Israel, was held captive and they were taken into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. And so 29 and verse 1 says, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders, which were carried away captive, unto the priests, unto the prophet, unto all the people 
whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captives from Jerusalem to Babylon. Let me help you to understand what Babylon means confusion. Babylon means confusion. In other words, the text here gives us an understanding of God's people, God's chosen people, Israel, where they were now held captives in Babylon, in a place of confusion, a place of turmoil, a place where people eat anyhow, drink anyhow, where they party, they drink alcohol, they eat the pork, they eat the shrimp, they eat the, everything that God say you should not do, that's the very things that they do. Just like some people today, uh, they, they have two, three, four, five women, women having multiple men, multiple partners, and they live anyhow, and they drink anyhow, and they carry on anyhow. Some worshiping cows, some doesn't know whether or not there is a God. All sorts of madness sounds like Babylon. But God has a people living in Babylon, exiled in Babylon. Notice the text says, the text helps us to understand that there were priests in Babylon. There were prophets, but they were carried away by Nebuchadnezzar. Held captive by Nebuchadnezzar from Jerusalem to Babylon, held captive. How do you get from Jerusalem to Babylon? How do you get from a place? of peace and tranquility into a place of confusion? How do you get from a place uh, where God has established his worship center into a place where idols are being worshipped? But when God's people often take their mind off God, God will not force you. So God allowed, God allowed, God allowed them to be, to be carried away captive. But praise the Lord, even if, even if they're held captive into a city of confusion, they now have an opportunity to be a witness in this city. What's the message? What's the message? Today you're living in a world filled with turmoil, filled with confusion, filled with madness. But you have to be different. You have to set an example for those who are looking on. So you've got to pray and tell somebody that God will deliver. You've got to sing the songs of Zion. You've got to, you've got to say, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words and wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all. Wonderful words of life. Sin a list to the loving call. Wonderful word. Hear me somebody. We've got, to, we've got to set an example. We've got to call on God even when we are in turmoil. Hear me. The text, the text, the text. The text in verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts. God here is giving comfort. Comfort to those who are bewildered. Comfort to those who are going through anguish and pain. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what your challenge is. I don't know if your challenge is as heavy as mine. But one thing I know for sure, that we all have our challenges. I don't know what your challenges are. The text says, the text says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Bless the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Hmm? Thoughts of peace and not of evil. In a world where, 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 where people are in anarchy, in a world where people are in turmoil, in a world where everything seems to be going upside down, God is saying to you, don't give up, my friend. God is saying to you, my brother, my sister, you can still make it home. You, you don't have to be held captive every day. There are those who are captivated by sin, but God is saying you don't have to be held captive because I have good plans for you. No wonder when Jesus spoke to the disciples before he left earth, he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. God has plans for his children. God doesn't want us 
always live in a world of confusion, in a world of anarchy, in a world of turmoil, a world of problems. God has good plans for us, but we have a responsibility. Are you hearing me, somebody? With all the plans God has, uh, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give us an expected end, the expected end where we will see the clouds rolling back. Are you hearing me? When we see, you know, this, when we hear the trumpet of the Lord and the dead in Christ is risen and we are caught up to meet him in the air, we all have that hope that burns within our heart. It's the hope of the coming of the Lord. But Jeremiah, speaking to those who are held captive said god has for you an expected end but you have something to do the lord has a message he wants you to hear this this evening he's telling you that he shall call upon me god is saying you should call on him don't look to idols don't look to cow like some people do hear me don't don't behave like some who say that there is no god don't behave like some and say you're agnostic, but I don't know who God is. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He, he was, he is, and he is to come. He is the Almighty. We're saying to somebody, Jesus is asking you this evening. God is asking you to call on him. Because he has plans for your life. But you need to call on him. He gives you a word of comfort while you're in your situation. There are those who are battered by the coronavirus. But God is saying call on him. Sometimes God has to allow us to go through turmoil and anguish because the only time some people will ever call on God is when they're in problem. But God is saying, no matter what the situation, call on him. He says, he says, he says, he says, then he shall call on me and he shall go and pray. Tonight is your prayer night. Tonight is a night when we intercede with God a little bit longer because we believe that when we pray, he will hear and he will answer. Now he's asking somebody uh, to go and pray. If you're having, if you're having the backache, if you're having the headache, if you're having the toothache, hear me somebody, if it's a heartache, a broken marriage, God is saying, call on me. Somebody needs to call on God. Ah, uh, there are those who are who were thrown in bin, and there, there are those, there are those who parents gave up on a long time. Maybe you, your father may have died, your mother may have died, there may be a foster child, and you're saying there nobody loves me, nobody cares about me. There's a God in heaven who knows your situation, who knows you by name and by nature. He is the one, he's the reason you are here. He can number the hair on your head. And he's saying, my brother, he's saying, my sister, call on me because I will hear you. Call on me because I will answer you. If you only but just go down on your knees and prostrate before me and pray and seek my face. Six says, then you shall call on me and you shall go and pray and I will hearten unto you. I will listen to you. I will give you a listening ear if you only but call on me. He is just a prayer away. Hear me, hear me, somebody. Hear me, hear me, hear me. No internet. There are no, no internet. No internet, my friend. No internet can connect you to your loved ones or, con or connect you to anything like, 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 like you can be connected to Jesus through prayer. Uh, let me help you. Let me help you. Prayer is the open of the heart to God as to a friend. One author says it. The, uh, the, uh, the, the same author says prayer, 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 prayer is a key that unlocks heaven's storehouse. Prayer. We are just a prayer way. So when you go to the doctor and the doctor doesn't have the answer. I don't know what your situation may be, but I don't know. The doctor, the doctor may give you over. There, there are those who can tell you that they have, get, they have gotten deliverance from breast cancer. Some could tell you that they've gotten deliverance from prostate cancer. Some can tell you that they've gotten deliverance from all sorts of disease because when they go to Dr. Jesus, I like the song that says the great physician now is near. The sympathizing Jesus. Somebody ought to remember that there's a God in heaven 
who hears and answers our prayer. The text says, and you shall call on me, and you shall pray, and I will hearken unto you. But I like verse 13. Verse 13 says, and he shall seek me. You shall search for me. So you're not only going to call on God. Ah, uh, notice he gives you the comfort to call. He gives you a comfort for you to call on him. And after you call on him, yeah, he, he, he's saying you must seek. In other words, in other words, the call, it shouldn't be a one-time call. So you pray now and you don't get any answer. Hear me, but keep on praying. You pray now, but you get no answer. Keep on praying. You pray one time, you don't get the answer. Keep on praying. Naaman went into the, the, the river of Jordan, dirty Jordan. The instruction was for him to dip seven times. He dipped the first time he came up, he still had leprosy. He did the second time he came up, he still had leprosy. He looked and he saw himself as a king. And he said, look at me going into the dirty Jordan to dip. That Naaman was furious. He was angry. He was mad. But when he, he was reminded, he was reminded that he had an expected end. But he has to fulfill his side of the bargain. He, he, was, he was reminded that he needs to continue. He can't give up now. You've come too far to give up now. Keep praying, my friend. Name and dip the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, and still came up with leprosy. But the seventh time, the seventh time, when he went in the seventh time and he got up, oh, he, his skin was as clean as a baby. Naaman was, was clean because he pressed on. Hear me, somebody. The children of Israel marched around Jericho. They marched around Jericho one time, but the walls never came down. Two times, the wall never came down. Three times, the wall never came down. Four times, the wall was still standing. Five times, six times. But, 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 but. After the seventh account, after the seventh time, all of them went around on the seventh day, they went around seven times, and after they gave a shout, the walls came tumbling down. Hear me, somebody. Hear me, somebody. I said, you're praying, and you may be praying for a long time, but you don't see the answer. But keep praying. Can I remind you about the woman who had the issue of blood? This woman would have who would have been struggling for 12 long years. 12 years. Can I remind you about the man who was blind for 32 years? When Jesus met him by Get Beautiful. 32. Can I, can I remind you, my brothers and my sisters, of many, many who are living in our day today, who today can testify that had it not been for the mercies of God, they would not have been here today. Mothers would have gone on their knees and prayed. They would be praying, mother, 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 praying, Father God, take my son out the dance hall. Praying for one year, two years, three years, four years, for years. But then came the day when the son was no longer a dancer, a selector. The son was no longer a drinker. The son was no longer a smoker. The son was no longer a womanizer. The son was no longer a party goer. But the son, my brothers and sisters, the daughter, my brother, was now a child of God. Can I tell somebody about the power of God? We pray and God delivered. We pray and God stopped the war. My brother, my, I don't know what you're going through. And hear me, there are some things you're, you're, you're searching to get deliverance for that you may not get it in your lifetime. But when God comes again, he said that this mortal, Paul says, this mortal shall put on immortality. Hear me, somebody. It's going to be a new you. If you have one hand, you'll get back your other hand. You'll have two hands. If you have one foot, you'll get two feet. Hear me, somebody. You're going to be brand new. my brother, my sister, it doesn't matter your situation. Don't give up. He says, and he says, seek me and find me. When you're diligent, when you're consistent, my brothers and my sisters, I want to, I, I, I wanted to see the three C's within, this, within, within the text. Uh, I wanted to see that there's comfort. I wanted to recognize that, there, that, there, that there's a call that's necessary. Ah, uh, 
And at, at the same time, my brother, I want us to realize that when you're consistent, there's going to be the end result. Consistency. Notice, notice. Consi the text says, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with Search for me with all your heart, and I will be found. This is because of consistency. The first thing that God did was that he gave comfort to those who are bewildered, comfort to those who are, who are held captive. And he gives you a word of comfort. Then he asks you to call on him. And after you call on him and you search and you're being consistent in your search and you're being diligent, notice what he says. He says, I will be found of you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, hallelujah, somebody, and I will gather you uh, from all the nations and from the places whither I have driven you, said the Lord. Somebody should be saying amen, and I will bring you again into the place where I, where I caused you to be carried away captive. Somebody needs to be reminded that the God of heaven, the God of the mountain, is still God in the valley. And when things go wrong, he will make them right. The God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. What are you going through, my brother? What are you faced with, my sister? Ah, let me remind you, let me remind you, Matthew, 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 Matthew chapter 4. Let me find a text for you. Did I say Matthew 4? Not Matthew 4. Let me go to Matthew chapter, chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, verse 8, for everyone that asks, receive it. And everyone that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it, it shall be open. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal the land. I will take it out of captivity. Why? Because you called on me, you were consistent. You never gave up. You, when you could not trace my hand, you trust my heart. What is it that's going to stop you from giving your heart to God? You probably would have strayed. You probably would have, would have, would have backslidden. But softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. He's calling for you, my brother, calling for you, my sister, to turn over everything to him. Call, up, call upon him. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He is, he is depending on you to call on him so he can save you. He, has, he, he, listen, he cannot save you without you. He has no hands but yours. He has no hands but ours, no feet but ours, no mouth. But ours, in other words, we are his instruments. God is calling on you to give your heart to him. He gave his all for you. He gave his very life for you. Why is it then that we are held captive in a Babylonian lifestyle? Why is it we are still held captive by sin? Why is it we don't know our head from our foot? Why is it that we are so confused? Why is it we don't know that there's a better day coming? All because of this Babylonian lifestyle. But we are calling on somebody to call on God. Give it up. Be consistent. Continue the walk. walk. Press like Paul to the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Because better days are coming, my friend. By and by, when we shall see our Savior in the sky, sorrows will be over. Joy will come at last. Better days are coming. By and by. Tonight, we only ask you to give God a chance. Give God a chance. I'm going to ask Pastor. And ask Pastor to pray this prayer. And ask him to pray this prayer. If you're watching via YouTube, if you're watching via Facebook, if you're watching via Instagram, I don't know which social media platform you're on. And ask him, my friend, 
I'm going to ask you to write your name in the comment section, in the chat. Put your name, put your phone number. Ah, the pastor is putting his email in the chat. He's putting his number in the chat. He's giving you some form of contact where you can reach him. Look, you may see, you may see a link you can click on. Look here, the, the, the church, the church, the church, God's agency upon earth, where you have placed the supreme regard, is, is ensuring that the mission, the mission is carried out so some men and women who are wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in sin can be saved. You, my brother, you, my sister, maybe you're in your house. Maybe you're in your house. Maybe you're in your house and you're taking, you're taking it for granted, but God wants to save you. Maybe you wouldn't come to church. Maybe you're a backslider, but you can still give it to God. I don't know what you're faced with, my friend, but whatever the situation, you can give it to God. He, my friend, knows every little bit of heartache and pain. Every time you call him, he'll hear. Every time you cry, he knows the reason why. He gives you a word of comfort this evening. He only asks that you call on him. Be consistent so he can deliver you from your captivity. Why not give him your heart? Why not give God a chance this evening? I'm going to pray. I know the pastor is going to pray to close. And when he's praying, I'm going to ask oh God. I'm going to ask him to pray for you diligently. Because the truth is, we need Jesus. Bow your hearts with me while I pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the message. Thank you, Lord, that you do care about your children who are living in a world of confusion, in a world of turmoil, a world of anguish, a world of pain, a world of sorrow. But God, I pray that this message, oh God, will go far, wide, and deep. Save somebody, we pray. Oh Lord, you know of those who are struggling with the different challenges, but help somebody know in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. And by God's grace, let us meet over on the other side. God bless you, my friend. Amen. What a beautiful reminder. You know, God is the one who is in charge of our lives. And as we surrender to him, as we are drawn nearer to him, he certainly is able to have his way in our lives. Thank you, Evangelist Daly, for sharing God's word. At this time, I'd like to invite our brother Radi, who would lead us in the singing of that beautiful hymn, hymn number 306 in the Seventh Day Adventist Church hymnal. Draw me nearer, draw me nearer, hymn number 306. Brother Radi, join us now as we sing that hymn. Okay, thank you, Pastor Heinz. And our closing hymn is hymn number 306, Draw Me Nearer. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord. To thy precious bleeding side. 
Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with the steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. O oh, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. O oh, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord. To thy precious bleeding side. Last stanza. Oh, the pure delight of a single Lord that before thy throne I spent. When I kneeling pray and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. O oh, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. O oh, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. Uh, God has certainly been good to us and we thank God for his word this evening. Uh, we thank God for the ministry of those who would have participated in our worship experience. Uh, this time I'd like to invite you to bow your head as we have a word of prayer. Loving Father, we are thankful to you, God, for the experience we've had with you this evening. We are thankful, of God, that you are certainly thinking good thoughts towards us. As a matter of fact, you have good plans for us. And Father, even as we connect ourselves to you through prayer, may those plans be realized day by day. As we draw nearer to you, we pray that you will certainly have your way in our lives so that uh, your will can be realized and revealed day by day. Father, forgive us for the times that we have fallen short of your glory and give us the strength so that we can walk on the path that you are leading us upon. Father, I pray that you will be with each worshipers this evening. You know, experiences, you know, challenges, you know, the prayers that we are lifting heavenward even at this point in time. Father, attend unto them by your grace and your mercy. Have your way in our lives and remind us, oh God, that you are able to do great things. So God, we submit to your leading. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for the victories. We thank you for your salvation, full and free. Continue to be with us even as we journey through the remainder of this week. Keep us as we trust in you, I pray. Bless our families, take care of our needs. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. For we make it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We certainly thank you for joining us this evening. We trust that your heart was blessed and that you are now empowered to do that which God is calling you to do. We encourage you to share the link so that others can be blessed with this worship experience. Remember, we continue next Wednesday again, same time, same place. Until then, may God bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, peace in your heart, peace in your lives. Give you peace so that you can be an agent of peace wherever you may go. Go with God's peace. Go with God's presence. Until we see you again, may God bless you. Do have a good night.